Hello and welcome back to another one of these Assetto Corsa videos and this time we should be filming the whole screen. I know, it's wild. And something else is new, there ain't this microphone up here because I've gotten a stand. Yeah, see that's, that's smart, it, it sort of clips on and then it holds it up. Should I hope this didn't uh, become too much earache for you when I uh, moved around the stand, please. So we should be good this time. Hopefully we should be good this time. Now, something you might have noticed on the thumbnail. This isn't actually the Pagani from the Revolutione. It's, it's two cars and none of them is actually that, that car. Now the thing is, I couldn't find anywhere on any of the websites the Pagani Revolutione. But what I could find was the Sunder R, which is... It, it's not far from it and when you look at the in-game set, it's, it really is quite a similar car. And, we're gonna put this one around and then that'll sort of be representative. Like it'll be a placeholder for now. Might might come a mod later and I'll I'll update it and if nothing else then we get that car in and yeah, that's fine. And also as a sort of a olive branch or <laughs> extended from this, I uh, I'm also gonna do another car, which is actually the car on screen now. We're gonna do the Pagani Waiwa BC, which is a Pagani. It is a price car, it is a legendary, and it was semi-recently given out. So yeah, I feel like the, you're gonna get two for the price of one. It, I've, th that should make up for me not finding the Revolution. <laughs> and these cars are fast. Really freaking fast. We are starting off with the uh, BC, because that is the slower of the cars, which you probably would have guessed looking at just the in-game stats and the fact that this is not a track-only car. It, um, it's a weird car to drive, actually, because it's... It's... Oh, there's two cars in one, and plus it has that thing come up every time I brake, which is sort of distracting. No, but at some corners it feels like a really grippy car where I should brake later and think, ah, oh, I left time on the table there. And at some corners it feels like one of those, like, more Koenigsegg cars, like, really fast, where I'm like, oh, whoa, 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 I need to brake, like, a mile or two ahead. Um, so, actually finding the right brake points was quite uh, difficult for this car, but I feel like I've gotten in some good times. Uh, I think 149 is so far my best, hopefully we're gonna beat that. But actually, uh, on the topic of times and best times, I'm in sort of a pickle, uh, a dilemma, because for all of the cars I usually have two times, I mean this is the second time I've done this, but yeah, for all of the cars. Uh, when I practice with these cars, I, I and you know, I had good lap times, I do. So, in these five times we're gonna get today, I might not actually beat that time I previously said at 149 because I, that was a really good lap time. And I want you guys to uh, like tell me in the comments which time is this car's official time? Is this the best time we get from these five laps? Because that would make sense because it's like you get five tries, best out of that. It doesn't matter what you potentially could do, you gotta perform in this given window so it's equal for all cars or should it just be, this is the best time you managed to get out of this car, this is how fast this car could do this uh, map, or this track. And for both times, and in this video I will put both times for both of the cars if I don't actually manage to beat my previous times uh, doing the 5 laps. But for the next videos I want to know like which time is the official time we're going to put in the scoreboard. Anyway, we're getting to the start finish straight here, so uh, let's see how fast we can go.
Next up, we have the Pagani R. Sunder R, I guess you should say. Let's just get inside of this one. Oh my god. Damn. Now this car is definitely grippy and fast and and good at braking. It's a really good car and I really get why it's annoying to be against in game. Because this one goes around corners like, oh my god. It's not Fury levels of Jesus Christ grip, but it is especially compared when you've just been driving the Viro PC. This car is so grippy. And it's such a pleasure to drive, it really is. But it's actually also sort of annoying because I always feel like, oh my god, I'm leaving so much time on the table. It's uh, I could always break later or something, but then I guess then then I do that and then I break too late. It's so yeah. It's, again, it's hard to find the breaking points, but this is a, this is a nice car to drive, definitely. Um, it does have a tendency to be a bit aggressive on the wheel, like it, it fights back. Uh, lap times doesn't come for free with this car, but when you actually get that car under control and tell tells it who the boss is, you get amazing lap times. And that's why I think 146 is actually my top time with this car so far, which would be a new scoreboard record if I were to uh, put that on there. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe we can even beat that. I mean, we did get a really good time with the BC just a minute ago. So who knows what we can do with this one? It's actually so good. I don't even have to break there. I can wait for that and then break all the way down. Which I found out I could do with the uh, BC as well. But this one just breaks even later. And we're coming up to the start finish straight. And I will start getting focused. Okay. Look at the speed, we're going 200 kilometers an hour! So here you have it, the times, uh, let's see how these compare to the others. Man, this car looks good. I've plotted the car's lap times in on the scoreboard and it actually just so happens that they both beat my uh, lap times I got when I trained with the cars, so the problem wasn't really relevant for this video, but I, I still want to get an answer, I still want to know like which time should I use. Let's see where they get on the board. So uh, going up, they beat the 12C, the Fiori. They're gonna be the Koenigsegg, the Banana, we're getting close now, we're getting to the s Ooh, this was the fastest one before, which means they're both quicker and the slower of the two is. The Raiwa, yeah, 148, that still beats the Porsche, which is amazing and ridiculous that we are now making cars, road legal cars, that go faster around a circuit than a Le Mans car from the 80s, that's insane. And yeah, I know it might just be because like I got a good lap time in and such and they are really close. So don't get me wrong, of course, I could probably 
go in and beat that time with the Porsche, but like, and that they're even comparable, it's just insane that road cars of today are so fast. Anyway, without further ado, the top car is the Revolution, or I guess the R. You see, I've got the R right down here, because that is technically the car I took around, but it's it's representing the Revolution. And since it beat the top car with two seconds, which is insane. <laughs> I feel like the Revolution would probably deserve the number one spot as well. It's a shame I couldn't find it, but but this is doing it justice, I would say, because that car is so fast around the circuit, and the lap times does reflect that. 146, 140. It's weird to think that there's all that's 18 seconds in difference between taking a Sunday R around the track. And uh, and a 12C and a 12C that's see, that's a supercar that's a McLaren supercar and it's 18 seconds slower. It's like a year in car terms. It's it's um, it's weird. It's it's really insane. But yeah, we got a new winner. We got the Revolution at the top of the board. This has been it. It's been great. Uh, hopefully not too long. But uh, I do hope you enjoyed. I hope you uh, want to subscribe and I hope I'll see you next time.